but I'm so weak and the knees fall into the floor Afraid I lose myself deep in your eyes And all at once I'm found in recognized Today I'm gonna check the injection timing and the valve timing on my 1989 Mark II Jetta diesel. The reason I'm checking this is because my fuel mileage is not quite where it should be. It's been averaging around 42 miles the gallon. When these are running correctly with good compression, they should be getting between 45 and 48, depending upon which way the wind's blowing or whether you're running your air conditioner or not. My first concern was that I had a compression problem. I ran a compression test on it. Compression was perfect. I have checked the injectors, I have replaced the injector nozzles, which leads me to the only conclusion and the last thing to check is to actually recheck the injection timing and in particular the valve timing. Now if that's off slightly, that could affect performance. The injection timing has a lot of leeway on these cars and the fuel economy rarely changes. So today what we're going to do is check the valve timing and the injection timing. To do this, we're gonna to have to remove the valve cover, we're gonna to have to remove the timing belt cover. We might as well get started with it. I'll get the car up on the jack where I can reach it better and get on with this show. This is the timing belt cover. We're gonna to have to remove that in order to do this job. First of all, we're gonna take the air box out so I can get to that. This is the air box. All the air going into the engine gets sucked through this and filtered. We have three clips, one here, one here, and one back around here that's kind of hard to read. And this is the timing belt. Things you want to check for, is it tracking down the center of these sprockets? The belt tension, you should take your thumb and your forefinger and just be able to turn it 90 degrees, but I like it so it's not extremely tight. This pulley here is the idler pulley. That's what checks your tension. The sprocket attaches to the camshaft by a tapered non-keyed shaft. When you loosen this bolt, break it loose from the shaft, it will turn freely. Next operation is we're going to remove the valve cover. The next thing we're going to do, and it's the hardest for me to get on camera, is to take the plug out on the bell housing to check the timing index mark for the flywheel. I'm slowly rotating the engine around until the index marker comes up. You have to make sure your index markers are lined up at the flywheel. To the, fly. the first thing we're going to do in this operation is check and set the valve timing. This is by done by putting a special tool in that slot on the end of the camshaft, having that fixed in position, and then line up the index marker on the flywheel. You need to make sure your slot in the end of the camshaft on the driver's side is in the high position, otherwise you're 180 degrees off. When your cam lobes are in the high position on cylinder number one, you're in the top dead center at the top of the compression stroke. Everything's in the right position. So now we move on to check and adjusting. This is the tool to set your camshaft in position. Just sticking it in there isn't enough. We're gonna have to shim it with feeler gauges to get it exact. We'll start off with say 19 and 19 on the other just to get it exact. They're both snug in there, so your camshaft is in its position. Actually, it's not that bad. It's a couple of degrees off. Not really sure how much that's gonna do, have to do with our fuel economy. Let's go on to setting the valve timing. That is the timing of the camshaft in relation to the crankshaft. We loosen this bolt, take it loose a little bit, your punch into a little hole and knock it loose. Then tighten it back down to where it's just snug, but we'll still turn on the camshaft. Then we're gonna bring the timing mark around on the flywheel so they line up. 
There. Camshaft is set into position. I'll tighten my bolt down that holds the camshaft sprocket to the end of the camshaft. We're gonna torque our bolt back down. You hear that click? That's your 33 foot pound. And again, not rocket science. We'll pull these out, take this out, but we're done with those tools for now. Now we're gonna set the diesel injection timing. This is a little bit more involved. We have a special tool we use for that. We have an adapter and a dial gauge. This is the dial gauge and the dial gauge adapter that we'll insert in the front of the pump in order to measure the millimeters of lift on the cam plate inside the pump in relation to where the engine is turning. So, and it's very specific how we're supposed to set that up. Checking 0.95 to 0.05, adjusting one millimeter plus or minus two. When messing with internal parts of a diesel injection pump, is don't get any dirt, not even dust on anything, because if it gets inside that pump, it can be catastrophic. Now, let's move on to setting the diesel injection timing. This is the inspection port in which you adjust the injection timing. Pull that plug out in order to put our adapter and dial gauge in. We take this little plug out, very carefully, don't lose the brass washer that seals the system and don't get any dirt on it when you put it back in snugly finger tight it in against the housing and then this is loose here so we've got to move this back and forth you want about equal distance on each end of that each end of here once you get that in place you tighten that down finger tight what we're going to do is rotate the engine backwards until the gauge stops moving. That's where we zero it, right like that. We rotate the engine clockwise in its normal direction until we get to the top dead center mark on the flywheel. So here we go rotating around. We want, it to, we want one millimeter of lift on this engine so we'll bring it around till we're just on top dead center. It's at uh, 92 millimeters of lift. A little bit of adjustment off the uh, valve timing can throw off the injection timing, which it did. So with us being out of spec, that tells me maybe I've happened to cross my little bit of a mileage problem because the valve timing was out enough to throw off the injection timing. That means the whole car wasn't quite perfectly right. If you have these things tuned perfect, they will get in excess of 45 miles to gallon. It is not unusual, for me with, especially with the turbo diesel, to get between 48 and 49 miles to gallon. With my driving habits and always running the AC, I'm usually happy with around 45 to 46. Let's go ahead and get this finished so I can get this car back on the road. The next order of business is to adjust the injection timing. In order to do this, I'm gonna to have to loosen up the four bolts that hold the injection pump down and actually rotate the injection pump back and forth until my dial gauge points to the right numbers that we saw in the book. All right, one down. All right, so let's move our injector pump thing back around. And we are on top dead center, one millimeter of lift at top dead center. Different cars, non-turbo diesels, different years have different places to set their injection pump timing. With the turbo diesel, it's one millimeter of lift is where you want it. All right, so we're done. We have double checked everything, actually double double checked it, and we have exactly 1.00 millimeters of lift. That's exactly where it's supposed to be. We have set the valve timing correctly. So the only thing left to do is to put the valve cover back on, put all the covers back together, and drive it for a little while and see what kind of mileage it gets. Anyway, let me move on. Let me get this thing put back together. The emotions fly like the ocean. I 
want to thank you for taping time to watch this video. And if you're watching this video, that usually means that you actually have one of these and want to know how to work on it. I'm really glad to be a help. Leave me a comment. Talk to me on Facebook. I'm always there. So, anyway, let me get this thing back together. Oh.